Hello, hello, and we say a good day to you this moment of your time. As the Pleiadian Council, we speak on behalf of the Galactic Alliance and many other guides working to support your planet through this grand process of ascension. We say it is always our pleasure to meet you and thank you for allowing transmissions to take place between our realm and many realms as it supports all that is and each and every one of you and each and every one of us in growing and expanding in our connection to source. So today, there is a special guest in many senses, you could say, though we will allow for a different guide to come through for a special message at this particular time. And this is something new coming through this channel. Though now that we have uh, allowed you all to get to know us a bit, we simply also want you to know that there are many different connections available for you. And this connection from Atlantis has something particular to offer you at this time. So one moment as we allow for the channel to bring in this new being. <clears throat> Hello, I am here and I extend a great thanks to all of you from this realm you know as Atlantis. You can call me Ease Kabara, though in our ancient tongue this was far from my name, which I cannot reveal to you now in its original tongue. Yet I come to bestow to you messages from the connections that have taken place for many of your years and are continuing to take place now back to our Atlantean world. There are many myths and ideas about Atlantis in your culture and you know that this entire continent sunk. This entire continent destroyed the other continent known as Lemuria. And I want to speak about more of what went into this occurrence because now you are seeing a parallel expression of some of the same negative beliefs and actions taking place in your world. And this is not the first time in any sense that societies have chosen that path. And now you have the choice to diverge. So I can talk a bit about who I was. I was an Atlantean priest and you could say politician. It worked differently in that time. Those roles were usually the same. And the Atlantean civilization at that time was seeking further expansion. At that time, there were two main civilizations on this planet Earth and they were Atlantis and Lumuria, yet there were many which you would consider in your current terms indigenous tribes and peoples all around the world. And the majority of those in Atlantis wanted to undergo what you now call a colonization, whereas the Lemurians resisted this and in many ways, attempted to stop that from taking place. However, it wasn't all of the Atlanteans that were in resistance to this program. And I was one of the few in the 
Atlantean civilization who stood up to prevent this group from steering the world into what we foresaw as oblivion, as obliteration. Yet, because of my actions, because of my voice, because of what I did and said in that time, I was poisoned and I died even before the continent of Lemuria began to sink. And as were many who were in resistance to this movement at that time. So, first of all, I want to speak to everything that led Atlantis to that point. And first of all, Atlantis was a flourishing and beautiful civilization. Of course, continents have drifted very much since that time. The area you know to be around the Atlantic Ocean and parts of the Mediterranean Ocean were home to Atlantis. And in its origin, Atlantis was a civilization that was in deep connection with those coming to your planet from the Pleiades, from Sirius, from Arcturus. And we had open stargates where there was communication and communion. At points we were very much realizing our oneness with the Earth. Similar to those of Lumuria, Yet, as time went on, the tendency for us in Atlantis was to find ways to further develop our technology, to continue to increase power spiritually. In many senses, we were seeking to be a superior civilization, a superior planet, and this eventually brought us to a point where we were cut off from contact with certain star groups that were paramount in our evolution. Now, we had a great god at that time that we knew to be the royal figurehead of the natural world. And at first, this figure was known to be, in a sense, androgynous. It was both beast and man, and both man and woman. It was known as Pan. And that name continued in some civilizations after our fall. This great spirit represented our union with nature. It showed us that what we gave to nature in the form of offerings and gifts and loving thoughts and actions would be returned on to us. Yet, as we developed, and of course, we were using many advanced technologies, both of telepathic communication, and telekinesis, moving matter, transforming matter with our thoughts and with crystals and with vibration and certain technologies once bestowed to us, to those star races. And in this devolution, you could say, we split that god Pan into many forms. And it was known that if we took some aspects of this figure, namely those that bestowed to us power to control, and separated it 
from the more loving, nurturing, and caring aspects that this figure represented to us, we could use that fraction of the initial figure's energy to take control, to take power. And so Pan was divided into many forms. And the first split that we used to generally channel and take power became known as Baf. And much later in your civilization, this figure of Baf became what you know as Baphomet. And this figure is still used by secret, because the secret has been out, societies in your world to gain power. And the positive aspects, you could say, of this figure, or the more gentle ones, came to be divided into many other gods or nature spirit energies. And we came to forget those aspects that would help us keep a clear connection with the natural world and remember in a sense that we were of the earth. And so that tendency continued to gain power, to take control, and in our way, we wished in many senses to take the Lemurian continent, though they had an ancient field of protection still intact. And we could not really take their civilization. And so instead we destroyed it. Yet doing so threw the whole planet out of sync and eventually, that civilization of Atlantis itself collapsed. And now, again, I, as I said, before that even occurred, I, it came to pass, as did many, in this sort of resistance movement to prevent these events that we foresaw from taking place. And so, there is in some of you a fear that if you were to take positive actions to block this power, or those who seek power, rather, from continuing acting in these ways, that you would in turn face the same fate. Yet, this is not true in this time uh, on your planet. Things have changed quite a lot. And while I do say that even in facing a death, knowing that this was an honorable experience, I actually knew that if I did what I did, that I would come to perish. And so it was not a struggle for me in some senses, the poison that I was fed became a nectar because that gift of virtue was more powerful than the destruction. And even if I myself had to fall with Atlantis, I knew it was what was to be. Now, in this time, you will not fall if you embody that virtue you can take that virtue in yourself and you must come to see that everything is intrinsically one, that you cannot forever separate those qualities that give you power from those qualities that bestow gentleness and humbleness. And to do so is only an illusion, it is a trap. For in dividing, you create great veils that prevent you from remembering that you are the divine, you are source and form, 
so now as the Pleiadians have said to you very much, you must come to see your intrinsic union, even with those that oppose you, even with those that embody those qualities that you deem very negative. Understanding that this initial figure, what we called Pan, embodied every potential archetype that man and nature can express. Nature has its great beauties, of waves, but those same waves can become tsunamis. Nature creates mountains that bestow to you those great portals of energy that allow you to connect deeper with the earth and also with the stars. Yet at the same time, those mountains cannot form without earthquakes. And you yourselves contain every potential, the potential to create and the potential to destroy. And you have come to see these qualities as good or as bad. Yet really, all of these qualities are neutral in their essence and expression. It is the way that you use them, the intention and the awareness that you take, the awareness that all is one and that you can never separate one thing from the other. That separation itself is an illusion, that we are all one, and all potentials are one. So do not fear. In this time on your planet, those seeking power are making great connection with something that was initiated in Atlantis. And this was not the first time. In fact, there was another time on this planet that this tendency arose. And there were times on other planets known as Mars, and model deck in which the same tendency to take power for its own accord arose. And now this tendency must come to an end. And it is your own loving actions and your own willingness to embrace your power, to understand that simply because power has been abused so much, you have come to associate power with corruption itself. Yet power itself is your birthright. Power itself exists within you. And as we have said in our world, simply through will, intention alone, and the technologies we have had, we were able to create and manipulate forms at will. And this same exists within you as you learn to work with the natural laws of this world. You know that what you intend you create, and what you focus upon long enough, and what you truly believe in will become your reality. Do not forget this power, because those who seek absolute power know this, and you must equally know this. You must see yourselves at one with those who seek power, and you must know that it is only them who wishes to continue this illusion that they are more powerful than you. They may have more access to power in some senses at this time, yet you contain the same potential to express that power. You contain the same potential to take what you are now calling sovereign action in your lives. And it is unfortunate that you say that the 1% contains 90, however percent of the wealth. But you must understand that spiritual wealth is greater than that of material wealth. No amount of material wealth could be equal to the bliss and joy that you experience in immersing yourself in spirit and doing that which benefits the all for its own sake. And even as I have said, that doing what I knew to be of benefit to the all would lead to my own demise. That became a blessing to me in its own right. So, with that, we ensure that you have trust. And we ensure that you know to unify what seems as polarized opposites, to unify what you see as negative and positive, to unify that 
which, which you perceive as male and female. Know that you cannot have one without the other, and that you are all. With that, we will allow the Pleiadian Council to return, and if in your questions you wish to specifically address us, you can ask for us. All right then, well, we thank you for uh, entertaining our guest. So let us continue with your interesting questions and anything you would like to share with us at this moment of your time. Um, may I go first? All Sorry. right, yes. Everyone here, thank you. Greetings, Palladium Council. My uh, first question is, uh, when we interact with a specific person, who actually chooses that version of that person from the infinite versions that exist? Our overs or our higher self? And uh, if it's possible to choose a different version of that person, and in what way can we cho choose? If based on relevance, probably, or something like that. And that's well, all of you is choosing that interaction. Both your higher self and to many extents your personal self, though by and large you are unconscious of it. So in order to act with a different version of that other self that you know is the other person you are interacting with, you first must have unconditional acceptance of the version that you are presently interacting with and know that your own higher mind organized that interaction for a very specific purpose. And, uh, I see. Uh -huh. And uh, that would be, and uh, how do you choose that, that version? Uh, you once said that uh, you have to rewrite the themes in the Akashic records or something like that. Uh, is it in any way linked to that idea? You have to... That can be a useful tool that you engage with to examine the themes that have been playing out in your life again and again and notice how you have upheld a certain role within those interactions. The most common of these themes in your world is to understand that when you play the victim, you create a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. And the, the best way is to imagine another version of that person. How would you interact with that? Emotionally imagine it? Or how well, would it be? Sometimes it is even easier for you to choose an interaction with a different person if that present person is not interacting in the way that best suits you. Mm-hmm. Because again, remember, you are not in control of that other person. You can never be in control of that other person. Of course, not, not based on control. All that you can do to have a better interaction is to change yourself. And the first way to change yourself is to release a resistance to your emotions, to allow your emotions, to express your emotions, and express your needs and your desires. And is see if that allows for a shift in the interaction. And if it does not, then it is better to choose a different person to interact with. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And my second question is, um, if uh, you can give us an image of what a new transitional uh, economic and social system uh, would look like. Bashar has once recommended uh, the idea of a republic versus a democracy, who explained very clearly that, that democracy is not ideal a true republic and i was wondering if it is that that would be based on uh, the principle of principles of liquid and delegative uh, democratic principles if you know about liquid delegative principles and uh, if that would be the best system and any other tips and ideas you might have oh, all right we don't have all of these same terms what we can say is that a new system is one that equally distributes power, that makes it such that everyone's needs are accounted for, and that well, what the Bashar speaks mostly to is this idea that the needs of the majority cannot be so emphasized that it erases the needs of some that are different. 
So this new way must be one in which everyone, absolutely everyone, is seen as equally valued and you can create a system in which all of their needs are met. It is also a new system in which you eventually come to dissolve all of your planet's borders and create a unified world. And this idea is often linked in your world with this uh, conspiracy theory because there are some that seek to control the entire world. But this true unification of the world is one in which power is given to all of the people of the world, in which everyone has a say and everyone is allowed to participate in the ways that work for them and given their own free will. And this is also a system in which really, once you unify the planet, everyone can have this idea of money to the point that it serves you at a universal stable income regardless of what they output and from there you can continue to trade and explore in the ways that excite you beyond the ways in which the new government of the world provides the basics for every single person Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, about the, the leadership system, uh, parliaments and stuff like that, do you have any other tips on how would uh, the debate systems, who would take decisions? Because um, not all people are entitled or able or uh, have the knowledge to understand every detail of uh, certain laws, certain economic systems, and how something like that, if you have any tips. How would that work? Oh, well, it is going to be a bit of a chaotic uh, transition. It is going to be a bit of a rocky period in which all of these systems undergo a great upheaval. Uh, this is, in a sense, not our specialty. We can say that reflecting what our, our friend said, that you must stand for what you are for and not oppose what you are against in an aggressive sort of way, but simply stand for what you are for. And these systems themselves will go through a great upheaval. You may find that if you do not democratically move out the leaders in various nations who are seeking absolute power in this year, that there may be a more radical way that you must change these systems. So. In a sense, you can anticipate both a rocky period, but also very many sudden shifts. And this is why we do say, it is best to take good care of yourself and prepare to be adaptable to these changes because if you insist on life continuing the ways that it has continued, and if you do not allow yourself to surrender the control that you don't have, to adapt to a new system, it may, in a way, of fry your system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, my possible All last right. question. No, we will continue to the next questioner. We can come back to you later if there is a sufficient time. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Again. So, if you have a question, just please unmute yourself and go ahead.
I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> um, let's see if I can get my video up here too. Okay. So um, a number of days ago, I, I don't remember exactly how long ago, maybe a week or so, um, I saw myself, it wasn't a, a full dream, it only lasted a couple of seconds. I saw myself with my uh, purple sundress on and it was turned inside out. And I have a couple of ways to interpret that, but I'd rather hear your way. Well, why would you rather hear our way? <laughs> because I don't know whether to consider it as like, um, you know, I, I could interpret that as I'm being too spiritually transparent because purple is a spiritual color to me, or that um, I need to be more spiritually transparent. What would you prefer? <laughs> Gosh. Um, well, I look at those things um, through a certain kind of a window. Um, right. uh, you know, I'm not sure how much of my transparency has been spiritual. Sometimes my transparency has kind of um, been disturbing because I'm fairly emotional and if I express my emotions sometimes people don't like it <laughs> but sometimes I've been honest to a fault in that it hasn't served anyone well we've other... spoken about this as well with you and we can again emphasize that if you are transparent only about what you see as negative and challenging you aren't being fully transparent okay so in a sense, you may be wishing to express this because you aren't fully believing in your own power. What you are not showing is your beauty, your power, and your capability. That is where there is opacity. That is the word for it. Okay. Okay. Um, and... Let's see. I got a little lost there. Um, so... Because it is not normal for you to see yourself as capable, beautiful, and powerful? <laughs> no, no, because of the... I, I, I can see that blooming. You know, it's yes. coming slowly, but it's blooming. But um, the thing you said before that, I, I'm not sure I understood it. I can't really recall exactly what you said before that. Well, we have said that to show only these weak aspects of yourself and this is not really the true term for it this is what the consensus reality perceives it as but to show only those emotional aspects but to not show to not have transparency for your power is not full transparency okay okay Thank you. Um, I, I can get in kind of difficult situations in relationship because um, there's a part of me that likes to make things up and then uh, <laughs> find out that I'm, I'm incorrect. I was just making up what that person was thinking or feeling. And there's, there's another part of me that's very intuitive and, uh, and sometimes I'm right on. <laughs> and, um, and so I, sometimes I, I'm having trouble discerning between the two. Well, it touches into something that has come up earlier. And we again wish to highlight something that even uh, psychology in its faults has picked up on. This Pygmalion effect. That when you assume that somebody is capable, powerful, or well-intended, you are more likely to interact with a version of themselves that is. Okay. So much of the time when you are assuming that somebody is thinking or feeling something negative, especially about you, you create that experience. There is a subconscious 
an energetic static frequency that resonates outwards and then is returned to you. Though again, if you came in contact with your indestructible core, your beauty, your power, and you saw yourself as innately wonderful because you are, as is everyone here, then you could instead start to assume in interactions that somebody was seeing the best in you. And you may notice how that shift in your unconscious and subconscious assumptions creates a shift in your being where everything relaxes. And the signal you put out is then in one in which the other can start to feel you and receive you more because that subconscious transmission of insecurity is no longer there. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Our thanks to you as well. Somebody else would like to interact with us at this time. Okay, so I would love to ask you a question. Yes. About uh, the chakra sound meditation. Yes. Um, I would love to hear your take on... Um, there are different systems, you know, about what kind of sound to use for each chakra. Oh, yes. Yes, and yes. so both the sound and the, the syllable or the the word or the on yes. each chakra. And there are many different languages in your world as well. So yes. consider it this way. That C, yes, we they are in many senses a variant on that same core vibration. And all of these sounds are variants on the same core vibration. So which language do you f prefer to speak? Which one excites you? Which one of these systems works best for you? And much as you can come to learn many different languages and speak them in different situations in your life, you can come to learn many different systems of which sound corresponds with which part or which chakra and use it for the occasion. Right. What I feel more drawn to is simply improvise. Yes. Then that is what works for you. Because again, the core of this tool or this permission slip and any such permission slip is your own belief and your own intent and your own will combined. Right. And what about the which, which note? You know, like some system starts maybe with root chakra, C, and then going up for each chakra. Does well, in it's general, the lower chakras will register more with deeper sounds. Yes. And the higher chakras will register more with higher tones. Yes. And the specific note does not matter as much. Again, that connects very much into that idea of languages. They are different languages that you can play with. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And as you play with this and enjoy your voice, you can know that every time you speak, your chakras can glow and vibrate a very high, powerful frequency. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you. So I can see that uh, Miley would like to ask a question now. Yes. Thank you. So my question, uh, I have two questions. The first one is about uh, several dreams that I had in the past three months that uh, after uh, thinking about them, I realized that they seem very linked to um, Atlantis, although I don't know a lot about that. But I dream really often about huge waves coming in different situations. And sometimes I see the waves overcoming a city or uh, the entire earth and yes. then I get clues in it uh, to link it to Atlantis like seeing an actor who plays in that or I saw also a lot of uh, clues connected to the Ark of Noah and I would like to know first 
if there is a link between those two, uh, like the myth of Noah and uh, Atlantis. And that's my first question. And then I would like to know why, if I'm picking up something from the collective or if it's something personal to, to my soul journey and then how can I work with it or what should I integrate with these, these dreams? All right. Yes, this uh, myth or story of Noah is very much a sort of allegory that translated the fall of Atlantis. And so the figure of Noah represents those Atlanteans who managed to survive the flood and were precognitively aware of the timing and created boats that allow them to sail off to meet those other at that time what you would consider indigenous peoples and share their wisdom. The animals then represent the wisdom that they preserved and this then went into seeding civilizations all around that area you know to be the Middle East, North Africa, the Mediterranean, and even some areas in your North and Central America and various islands in the Caribbean. So as for your personal connection, yes, you do have a strong soul connection with those who were engaged in the resistance, much like our friend shared in the beginning, and a soul connection as well to those who carried on preserving that wisdom. So you may continue to ask for more information about this. There is another meaning of these waves, and it has to do with the waves passing through the collective psyche. The water, of course, representing the emotional body of the collective and the waves being a sort of way that the collective emotional body is going through shock and turmoil. And you need to build new structures, new boats in order to move through, to navigate these new waters with better integrity and better structure than before. Okay, thank you very much. Any further questions about this? Can, how can we um, then integrate this in our lives, you know, building a new boat? Is it through our practices or is it through this, um, uh, I don't know how to say, embodiment of unity within or is it through our personal work? Yes, through all of those things through every action that you take, through the belief systems that build the frame of the boat, believing in your inherent unity, believing in your capability, believing in your power to create. And then those practices, again, that you may be remembering from Atlantis, such as the sound healing, the use of geometry, the use of visualization and will in combination. And in many senses as well, the telepathy, which this is a form of. This channeling is a form of telepathy. And you can develop greater forms of telepathy by playing games with each other, seeing if you can transmit frequencies and thought forms and download the information that you are simply thinking and visualizing with partners. There's a way that this telepathy can come to be remembered. And of course, it is also in taking the appropriate actions to continue to send this loving vibration of unity out into the world so that it reaches more people, so that you, in a way, build lifeboats as well, creating a strong foundation for you to make sure that you don't sink when you pass out the lifeboats or life jackets to anyone who may be getting pulled into the waves. And this way they can follow your example and come to build new boats or hop on a similar boat or your own boat, if that is the appropriate circumstance. 
Okay, thank you very much. Oh, yes, our great thanks to you as well. So I have another question, but I can ask later. All right. We thank you. Thank you. Is it okay if I ask a question? I'm not sure the format for yes. determining. Yes, it's cool. Oh. Um, I'm asking a, a question for a friend. Um, and I don't know if this is within the scope of what you like to answer. So I trust you will tell me. Right. Um, thank you. Um, she is um, wanting to purchase an RV and it's a lot of money and she's not sure if she should do it alone or purchase it with her boyfriend or just maybe wait and see um, if this is not a priority at this time, but if this choice will serve her to, um, to purchase this RV at this time, um, if this is a good use of her money at this time in this particular RV. Well, with this in any decision, one must come to a place of absolute trust, tuning into the heart and feeling, what would it be like to have this RV? Does it feel exciting? Does it fill her or them with passion? Does it allow them to come to experience greater freedom? And if there is a sense of unsafety in it, well, one must then examine if that is due to genuine lack of resources or is, if it is simply due to fear. For, again, remembering this is an abundant universe, you can create anything you desire. Yes, thank you. Is is there like um, maybe a a beneficent connection between her and her family and this particular RV? Like, is it do they want to join together, so to speak? She must find out for herself. Okay. Asking transparently, openly, expressing all desires, fears, concerns simultaneously to allow for a willing negotiation. I see. Thank you for your insights, Lady and Council. Yes, our thanks to you as well. Hi, I have a question. Yes. Um, thank you for connecting with us today. Oh, thanks I, to you as well. Next week, I'm going to the Maya region of Mexico to volunteer on a corn farm that uses ancient Mayan techniques and oh. preserves some older strains of corn. And exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I've been called to this region of the world for a long time. Well, for a while, and I know the channel is also in the Maya region, and I was curious if you had any insights um, as to my soul connections to this group and how I may best plug into that energy in this part of the world and make the most of this experience. Yes. In many senses, this is, first of all, a great opening into the magic of the natural world. So be open to a telepathic communication with the spirits of nature and the spirits of the plants, knowing that the energy you put out into this world will return on to you. You reap what you sow, both physically and energetically. So you may learn to care for the plants and come to meet them in more powerful ways. And of course, there are soul connections that you do have to what you know as Mayan past lives. So you may be interested in exploring that as well as the idea of their astrology and connecting with the cycles of time as they know them and seeing how that may apply to your own life. Most of all, be humble, be open, have no insistence on any outcomes and know that this is a great journey that will support you both in grounding deeper and an opening to many spiritual realms that are always with you. Great, thank you very much. Any further way we can clarify this? Um, I didn't quite hear exactly what you said at the beginning. The connection broke up. You said um, 
it became clear to me from when you started talking about the connection with the land and being telepathic with the nature. You reap what you sow, both physically and energetically. So know that as you come to meet with these plants, there can be many nature spirits that you meet. And as you bestow good energy, blessings, love, onto the nature, natural world, it will return onto you. And you may come to feel yourself as a living part of the framework of nature. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Oh, all right. I thank you as well. So we have a question from the Facebook Live. It's uh, Kevin. All right. He's asking, I would love a permission slip as a mantra from the council to assist us in connecting to our highest possible version or future self. And there's another question afterwards. All right. Well, first of all, you must have that foundational belief of knowing that much in the same way that you can connect with us or with other lifetimes, you can connect with other versions of yourself from this lifetime. So entering into that meditative state and inviting in a future version of yourself to meet you. And perhaps you will see them or feel them or get a sense of their world and invite them to show you what they are doing, what they are experiencing, and most importantly, what they know and what they believe. Ask them for tips and how to follow that timeline. And you can also play a game of rewinding the time to see from that moment you are the future self, every other moment from then to now, what other future selves were involved in that timeline? What was every step of the action and interaction? Until you get to this very moment and you can see genuinely the next steps. Uh, beyond anything else, the most important part of this practice is to step into the feeling space of passion, of knowing, of trust, and continue to act from that, following the steps in your own way that lead you to these goals and knowing that what creates the field of attraction more than anything else is your embodiment of passion and joy and universal acceptance. Okay, thank you. And the uh, next question. I would love to know your insights on where the education systems are going in the next three to five years. All right. They are generally heading in the same course, though will come to be interrupted eventually. You yourselves must develop new education models that understand that principle of passion, excitement, and love, that understand that what one is excited about learning and feels a natural passion for discovering is going to serve their soul most and will unlock the innate power in knowing more than anything. Eventually, you will come to understand the quantum learning mechanism that it allows you to see outside of this limited framework of linear time and physical reality to meet with other aspects of your soul that can teach you things that you can simply download knowledge and information without having to go through all of the learning. One way of doing this is of course, as many people do already, putting books near their bed or underneath their pillow or somewhere close at night and simply intending that the information is received at an energetic level. You can play with this and trust that as you open more of your intuition and your channeling ability, you can channel knowledge 
and that there is a greater collective mind that allows you to learn things that other people know simply through telepathic connection. For now, the words and the exchange of knowledge is very helpful in developing you. And again, this is more advanced, what we have just spoken about, but returning back to that idea for the now, that when children and adult learners equally are, instead of forced to learn everything and allowed to learn what uniquely excites them, you will find that people come to specialize through the trail of their own passion in the areas that are most relevant to their soul expression. And through the exchange of information, will gain access to other bits of knowledge that they need to see the larger framework of reality. Wonderful. Thank yes. you. So, Manuela? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, the, the first question I have is about myself. I've been quite lost lately. Uh, and as we all know, without a, a point, uh, we get all the energy get lost. And I guess that's where I am right now. I have no idea what to do next uh, because I don't like the ideas that will come if I go to my job. There will be like next November, but I would like to know if my guides or anyone in the spirit realm could give me some direction of what to do or if there's any message for me. Are you following your passion? Are you doing things that lift your vibration and fill you with love and joy and connection? Uh, I do follow those things, um, but I would like to uh, give myself a, a more physical purpose, like having something that I will enjoy to do in the real world. For saying that, meaning uh, really exchange with other people. I like commerce. I like talking to others and I would like to have my own business. Yes. But no idea where to go. There's so many subjects. I have no idea where to go. What do you enjoy most? Like I said, I like commerce, but there's, I, I live in a big city. So yes. there's a lot of commerce. <laughs> yes. So I, I, at the same time, I like it. I fear that I may not uh, sustain myself with that business. All right. Though again, you cannot let your fear prevent you from acting on your passion. Again, remembering that fear is most of the time a trap. It is a trap of a negative belief. And so if many people are involved in something, a negative belief will make you see that because so many are involved, then there's less of a chance for me. But the real truth is, if you see it from a positive lens, that because many people are involved, there are even more opportunities for me. I see. It's, it's, it's difficult from my perspective <laughs> because right now in the big city there's all these big uh, companies so everybody's used to go. What I will propose is something that there's already a market on so that, that, that's why it, it's so difficult to go. But don't you see that what you will propose is a unique offering through you. You have a unique way of doing it that is different from anyone else. So that would stand for no matter what I do? Yes. Okay. 
Okay. And, uh, can I ask? Yes, yes. But we do say simply through following your passion and relaxing, letting go of those beliefs, trusting in the greater good of all, trusting that this is an abundant and caring universe, you will find a pathway for yourself. You will not go without, we assure you this. And the more you release that fear, the more you free yourself to do anything you really want. Okay, that's reassuring. Uh, I'll try to stay positive. Sometimes it's, it's hard with all the things that goes around. And that's the second part of my question. Uh, so a few months ago, Bashar, um, well, someone asked Bashar uh, about uh, something significant that would happen this year. And oh, I... did say that something significant would happen around September this year that would come from the Eastern Europe. I don't know if you are allowed or if we can already receive more information about it. Let us check for a moment. Okay. We can confirm that this will take place. We cannot say what it will involve, though we can, again, reassure you that the greatest gift now is to be adaptable, to be open to change and transformation, for this is a time of collective transformation, and you are really just uh, beginning through this transformation in many senses. Okay. Am I allowed to third question? Or yes. Is it... Okay. Uh, it's about uh, what we spoke about a few, a few days, well, weeks ago. Uh, that would that would be about my uh, preparing or uh, exchange of contact or uh, telepathic contact. Is is there any way that I could uh, help with this process more? Are you meditating? I don't know if I am meditating in the sense. Uh, the normal medit I don't even know what normal meditation is. Uh, but are you setting time aside to quiet your own thoughts and focus on allowing this connection? Yes. All right. And what are you experiencing? Every time I do that, I do experience some tinglings. I do ex experience some changes in my arm, in, in my left arm. Um, sometimes uh, I hear things or not yes. hear my here uh, there's some kind of response when i do it all right very good so we would say continue okay. and trust in that process and also know that when you do that meditation immediately before going to sleep you do increase the likelihood that your dreams are a space of further telepathic communication oh that's what i do every night <laughs> okay I I, even though I have no idea if what I, I tend to forget quite rapidly what I dream. I do know that I should probably keep a, a record on. I really don't know why I don't. I feel like I'm, maybe I'm a bit overwhelmed, overwhelmed by my life. I don't know. Uh, but I, Can I you tend... simply open uh, your technological device after you really get up and speak for a couple of minutes about your dreams and even if you don't have a memory, simply say, today I don't remember, though I am feeling this, I'm feeling this sensation and I am thinking about this. And simply getting into the habit, the routine of it, will then increase more your likelihood of dreaming and remembering it. And also when you wake up, make sure that you don't immediately move, but you make yourself aware, ah, okay, here I am, I am awake again. What did I dream? And attempt yeah. to go back into that trance in between awake and asleep. So that in that state, remember, it is more easy to access those dreams. Okay. I always try to try to find some message. I, I do have a, a feeling that I know 
even though I don't recognize the faces. All right. I, I feel like I just know those people, even though I don't really recognize them on my daily life. Yes. Because they are again guides or other soul aspects that are familiar to you at that higher self or soul level, you could say. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, well, great. Thanks and love to you as well. Very helpful. Thank you. So, Angela is next. Hi. Um... I had two quick questions. The first one is, um, I have been feeling called to move or um, relocate for a while and uh, currently living in Oregon and okay. have never really felt um, like being able to, to grow roots here. And I just wonder if you see a, a location um, people of like mind are, are important to me um, on the planet if there's a location where I would be in, in my highest joy and, um, and success there. Have there been any thoughts that have already come to you? Um, you know, the area around um, either Arizona or New Mexico when I think about the United States is the only place however um, weather and again like-minded people um, are important and I don't really necessarily resonate with those two in that particular other than perhaps Sedona but yes. um, but the snow is not awesome for me. <laughs> so I wondered if maybe it's a whole other country, which I'm not familiar with where that, where that may be. And right now in the current state, um, you know, moving to outside of the U.S. might be a little difficult. Can you travel without necessarily uprooting everything right away? Can you travel? Yes, and I desire to travel. We would suggest going on a bit of a vortex tour. Mm. So you may travel south, perhaps stopping first in the area of your Mount Shasta, perhaps checking out some of the mountains around Santa Cruz before heading east into Arizona, New Mexico. Sedona has some energies for you, and we were already feeling this, knowing that, again, we are in a higher uh, concentration there, our ships, and you can enter some of those vortexes to come into clear connection and vision with us. And there are many like-minded souls there, most certainly. There are also other uh, areas in your Arizona and your New Mexico, investigate the vortexes that do exist for there are many different regions and different vibrations you can attune to. And you may find as you do this, certain ones will call to you or you may make certain connections that allow for an entire move to be made possible. Mm, thank you. That's oh, yes, sir. Thanks to you as well. And my second question is, um, for a great part of my childhood, I was influenced by Christianity. And um, in my early 20s, I spent a lot of time um, kind of outgrowing that what I felt was a lot of brainwashing and was constantly in fear as a child of heaven and hell and right and wrong and all of these things. Um, so. I have widened my views so much since then. However, in the state of the world today, I keep hearing that these are, quote, biblical times, and it really does. There are many things that are showing up, including this uh, huge portion of supposed Satanist cults and that sort of thing going on, and, and the various things as I'm sure you know um, which has been a bit confusing as I'm like feel like I'm it's coming full circle um, can you speak to that at all 
Yes. Understand that most of your Bible was changed over time and written not in a direct literal sense as it is often interpreted and used, but more in metaphorical senses and also used for the sake of converting. It was uh, written in a way that would uh, hook people. And at the same time, there are some uh, certain tricks here that this idea of revelation does tie into many of those things that are occurring now in your world. And there are many different interpretations of this. Though, when you look to many of those who are still in that religious mindset, there is a deep fear that interprets this supposed apocalypse as an end, when really it is the beginning of a new. And the splitting of worlds, you could say, is what it really means to, and there's this idea of a rapture, that some souls are moving into this higher plane of earth and others are moving into a different version, a parallel version of your planet entirely. You are, and all of you really listening to and engaged with this message are, aligned with that new higher vibration earth and hence ascending. So there need be no fear of any of this at all, only a willingness to adapt and operate from love. Mm. And so would it be irresponsible of me to disengage from this current 3D system in a sense as far as like, I don't want to see, well, I don't really watch the news, but I, even social media is a, a form of of news and of fear and just disengage and, and focus all my energies on, on that love and on that ascension individually. Um, yes. And not worry about the rest. <laughs> well, understand that this idea of ascension is one of unification. And so the higher you raise in true love-based consciousness, the more you are oriented towards service and helping. And at the same time, you are removing yourself from the collective in senses that the uh, controlling forces, the uh, fear-based information that is coming through both mainstream media and many forms of alternative media is not something that you want to really engage with unless you can use it as a form of entertainment. And we say use it as a form of entertainment in a sense that when you really anchor into this higher reality, this understanding that we express that while you are in a phase of deconstruction and rebuilding on your planet, you are awakening to greater forces of love. You are awakening to the part of you that is beyond the chaos and always, always in a state of true and powerful unconditional love. When you can do that and you can watch this mainstream narrative and see the ways that they attempt to hook people into fear, you can through understanding that, learn how to unhook people to fear and bring them to awaken to love. So if you still feel fear triggered when you look towards any of these forms of either mainstream or alternative media, it means that yes, it is time to disengage. And when you finally get it, it finally clicks into place, that it was a joke all along, it is okay to look at it and it is okay to in, uh, engage with it. And that may help you see the very clear deception that is very apparent 
when you can come to see from those higher lenses of reality. And in doing so, you can help many disengage in the same way that you have done. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome very much as well. Joachim, go for it. Um, hello. Good hello, day. Yes. This is Joachim speaking. Hi. Uh, I'm quite interested in all the cultures and I would like to know the things which is next to the pyramids in Egypt. Did the things look differently in the past times and why? Did things look differently? The, the, no, the, the, the things, the things, the, the lion or the, you know, next to oh. the, the pyramids uh, uh, which has a human head right now and the body of a, of a cat or a lion. Yes. Um, my question is, is uh, this, uh, this, this cat and, and human mixture, did it look differently in the past? Like was the, the head uh, different in the past than it's now? Well, it looked more clear. It looked more accurate, you could say. It did fade over time. The Sphinx is, in many senses, a depiction of Lyran beings, mm -hmm. which did come to your planet to support you in those times as well. So that means it's the original head, which is... Um... Uh, on it, so it, there was no uh, modification on that. No, correct. Other okay, than you. degradation, which yes. did distort the image, it did look differently back then. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a second question as well? Yes. Thank you. Um, I would also like to understand the function of the Ark of the uh, of the co uh, Covenant. All right. The function of it. Yeah, the function or, or what was the purpose of it? It was a tool that did contain, again, ancient vibrations, relics left behind from, yes, Atlantean times that enabled a higher uh, cognition through connection with that vibration. So there were um, undocumented or erased uh, instructions of how this device uh, was used to attune to those frequencies and align one's vibration with source. Okay. Um, and does it still exist or uh, was it? No. Was, no, it does not. Okay, great. Thank you a lot for answering my questions. Have a good oh, day. Yes, our great thanks to you as well. It does exist, however, in the sense that everything that has existed at one point still exists. So when you connect with past versions of yourself in this and other lifetimes, those expressions of art and also uh, spiritual connection can still be attuned to. So it still certainly exists in these astral realms and remnants of it may be discovered. In its original form, it does not exist. Though that does not mean you can still, you still have the, you still certainly have rather the ability to use its vibration for the purposes that serve you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Oh, I thanks to you as well. So if nobody else has a question, then uh, Luca, you can ask anyone. Thank you very much. Hi again. Hello. Uh, yes. I'm uh, feeling quite challenged in my verbal fluency and I was wondering if it's a blockage in my chakras or if you have any permission slips for better verbal fluency. In every language? Um, in all languages, yeah. 
All right. Are you uh, fearing some degree of miscommunication? Not always, no, not really, no. Sometimes I get uh, very much in a state of flow, especially when someone uh, asks me a question and then I have no problems of uh, speaking. I speak very fast and fluent. But, and uh, in the many... times that you do not speak fluently, is there any degree of fear present? Mm, I don't think so. Not fear, it's more about uh, wanting to be very precise and uh, full, f complete in my transmission without leaving any uh, ability of interpretation, of m misinterpretation, without leaving so, any possibility of, all right. possibility of misinterpretation. But you are not yeah. fearing that misinterpretation? Mm, it could be, it could be on a very deep subconscious level, but I mean, that's because uh, each time in my life uh, I left out some detail in a communication, almost each time someone interpreted it uh, ne negatively. All right. And that was a deep lesson of mine. Yes. So, get in touch with the fear that is behind that, that is left over. and. You may even do that regression experience where you return to those moments and notice which details were left out and as yourself today, include those details and see what that may have changed. Connect with that version and integrate those lessons. And when you diminish that fear, understand that you will communicate everything you need to communicate in the flow state. and. Should you be in any degree unsure if it is coming across clearly, you may or must ask, are you understanding this? Is this coming through to you in a clear way? And understand that any detail that is left out can always be added. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, okay. Yes. That would be all. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, another question, if it's okay. Um, as you perceive me uh, in my energetical system, uh, do you perceive any imbalances or min mineralogical or energetical balances? Because uh, I, I'm having, since I was born, a challenge with uh, some um, seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, if you know, but quite excessive and some inflammation of my nose, uh, quite difficult to, to breathe. And uh, if you can suggest any supplements or something like this. Well, you can see this as a sort of overactive solar plexus chakra consider this energy center is expending too much energy. It is creating, in a sense, too much heat. So bring your focus to cool down, relax more, and let go of any degree of control over how others perceive you, knowing that when you perceive yourself as a whole and complete creation of source, nothing else matters. And you will attract those who can see you in a similar light. So open and relax this chakra. Imagine that this energy is able to ground and release through the earth and channel upwards openly into your heart center in beautiful and stable ways. It has much to do with, again, relaxing and letting go of control, realizing that you cannot control others and you certainly cannot control the way they perceive you. They only perceive you through their own filters. And if you remember that and come in your, into yourself to restore your own sense of self to one of great love, wholeness, connection, perfection even. Perfection even within the flaws and the details that may be left out you will certainly clear this up easily. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, if there's anyone wanting a question, I, I could have another yes. one. If there's, yes, any... there, there's one more person, it's uh, Amanda. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Oops. Uh, 
Uh, uh, give me a second. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we are here. Hello. Hello, pleading counsel. I very much would wish to know a little bit more about my star family. All right. Thank you. Well, you have made those connections with hybrid races before. They yes. are still with you and open to receive your input, your energy. You also have a strong uh, imprint from the Pleiadian connection, and you can open that as well. Beautiful. Thank you. And I wonder if I may ask, related to that, uh, if I have children. You do. I thought Hybrid so. Children. Yes. Okay. The Shalanadi. And is that, I'm sorry? Well, they are known uh, by, as the Shalanaya. Shalanaya. Yes. All right, then. That makes sense. Okay. And I, as I was told, that was, or I divine that that was actually a guide name, Shal Shalamara. Shalamar? Yes. That is a name that you can use to connect to some of these children. Beautiful. Thank you very kindly. Um, I'm blank now, so I, I presume that is all I need at the moment. All right. Well, we thank you. Actually, though, I do have one other, forgive me. It is related to potential, potentially, a potential abduction experience, if that, if that has happened to me. Yes, it did. I thought so, too. Okay, my love. Um, my loves, I thank you so much for your beautiful presence. And you may remember that abduction experience in certain hi hypnotic or meditative states, recalling yeah. the details, and that will also help you tune more into that frequency of the Shalanaya and the Yayao. Mm, 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 beautiful. Thank you. Oh, Thank you everybody. thanks and love to you as well. Yes. Was there another question? Somebody who asked before who had something more? We do remember. Yes, so now. Uh, I wouldn't have a short is one. It Lara? Sorry, there's the four people want, that want to ask a question. And the next one is Laura. If you have a question, Laura? Yes, yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Hi, um, uh, I know Dante. So I'm excited to be here and to be able to ask a question. I'm so excited, I don't even know what to ask. All right. So uh, I suppose a, a, a sort of a, a reading, I think. Uh, tell me what I need to know. Well, we are not psychic readers in that sense. <laughs> okay. We ask you, uh, are you following your passion? Are you doing what you love the most? I am. And what is that? I'm babysitting my grandson. All right. Um, I'm also uh, taking a class in neuro-linguistic programming. Yes. And I am a Reiki master teacher, so I'm teaching Reiki whenever I can. Yes. Um, and sending, of course, always continuously sending. Um, so, yes, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Oh. Very good, yes. And so I guess my question, uh, one of my questions is the, uh, the, the, the virus that has uh, struck us, yes. the world, and this craziness, um, what can we do as light workers to really make a difference? To release the energy of fear and division to understand that there must be uh, cautions that you take and that your world is changing and that you are active in the participation of it. So anything you can do to unify people, to dispel their fears and to encourage them to work with what they can to raise their vibration, to take care of their bodies, to love one another, and to take actions that represent the world that they most want to see and be a part of. Ah, okay. 
them to take action. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Because <clears throat> I feel like I'm doing all the rest of it. I'm talking to them about um, getting their bodies healthy uh, so that <coughs> if, it, if it does come to them, and it, it probably will, there's no, I, I don't think any of us are going to um, get away with not getting this virus at some point. So uh, the, the, the key is to get yourself healthy, mi mind, body, spirit. Um, and the body is the biggest thing, the biggest deal to, uh, yes. to make sure that you're healthy. Your body's going to be ready for it. Yes. So you can bounce back. Yes, most certainly. Okay. Everything you can do to strengthen your immune system. Okay. And also understand that fear itself lowers your immune response. So being in a relaxed and open state is more, most helpful. And also, in a longer-term perspective, these viruses are able to infect humans at such a rapid rate and also leave their place of origin because you have disconnected from the natural world to such an extent that there is such huge densities of population and people stress themselves out so much that their immune system is diminished and natural environments are destroyed so that all of the forces that work to contain them and prevent them from interspecies movement are destroyed. So also helping yourself and others reconnect with nature and planting the seeds for humans to discover themselves again as part of nature and use all of the resources of nature and live in harmony with nature is another great key in this process. Yes, okay, okay. I just recently had a, a message to, um, <clears throat> to start doing Reiki outside. Yes. Um, getting, having sessions out there and, and having a Reiki share out there. So, yeah, that definitely uh, uh, was already something I, I was told already. So, thank you. Thank you for that confirmation. Oh, yes. Knowing that Absolutely. as you are deeply in connect with the earth and the trees, there's a resonance that takes place that naturally brings your body into alignment. We do encourage this energy work and we congratulate and thank you for participating in it in this way. Yes, you are welcome. You are welcome. And this is my joy to do that. So, um, if if things really go to shit down here, are you guys going to come and, and save us again? <laughs> we are not saviors. We cannot do that. <laughs> we will meet you at a point that you are able to meet us. So, understand the nature of vibration, resonance. So we are vibrating at a certain rate that is right. higher dimensional in nature. Humanity is vibrating at a certain rate. And mm -hmm. when humanity is able to raise to a point that we can meet you, we will come. Mm -hmm. And humanity in many senses must be prepared to allow for our energy to meet you. You must be willing to overcome your fears. And there will be many gradual processes that allow for this. So when you bring yourself under the night sky and gaze to the stars, we encourage you to open yourself to a vibration of wonder. Now first take in the beauty of all that's there. Appreciate the stars. Notice the connections between them. Imagine yourself like your ancient ancestors who mapped out the trajectory of stars and planets and developed the constellation system that you now know. Know that there is wisdom for you there. And as you do that, invite us to come to meet you. And you may come to see different ships, different occurrences. And Notice that as you do this, every time there may be certain degrees of fear that purge through your system. So there will be many sort of windows when you have those interesting phenomena where orbs or interdimensional beings present themselves. You may notice the shock that arises in your system. And 
you must gradually diminish this to the point that your bodies at a collective level are able to integrate this energy. And you do this individually over time. The more you open to experiences of contact with us, the more you are willing to allow our energy to meet you. And there will be a certain groups of you that meet uh, physically extraterrestrial life before the collective is ready to do that. So every time you open up to be an ambassador for these star beings, the window of contact is expanded. Okay. That's very, very exciting. Oh, yes. It's exciting for us as well. Yes. Oh, darn. There was another qu question I had. I oh, think right. well, we, have, we, will... we haven't so much time left, and the okay. two other person want to ask a question. Okay. So let's see if there's more time when we are finished, Lara. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. and our great love to you as well. Thank you. And the next is DCH. Hey. Hello, yes. Hey, um, I'm just curious, like, what's the deal when we get the hiccups? Um, like, why does that happen? And like, is there something we could, like, yeah, what's the deal with that? In general, it has to do with rushing, either rushing your thought process or your actions and not taking enough time. And this causes your throat, your ability to express and also take in, of course, energy to sort of uh, backfire. And this is why you either need to drink slowly or breathe slowly in order to undo that process. So uh, if you are having hiccups, you must ask yourself, in which ways am I rushing? In which ways am I trying to push to get somewhere or something? Thank you for that. Yes. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. Yes. So, expanding on that, it has to do with opening your throat so that you can clearly enunciate and clearly receive information. And as we have said with somebody else before, letting go of the pressure of miscommunication, letting go of any anxiety around that, and trusting that details not included first can be added later. And the most important thing is to be present in the moment and allow the ideas to express as they wish to express right here, right now. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that's definitely my thing. All right, we well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and Georg, go for it. Uh, hi, I'm wondering about, I have this language that kind of just comes to me as some oh, people yes. call oh, it a light language and, and I don't understand it and I can, I was just, it just sounds like it's Chinese to me, but it feels really amazing when it just kind of flows and I'm wondering if you can give me some insights into it and if I, some people have said that maybe I will start being able to understand it in English or I don't know, can I just speak a little bit and see just listen and uh yes, certainly if you would like to and so like i say that and i have these feelings that kind of like tingles that flow through my body it feels really good i feel very joyous doing it but i yes. i don't understand it can you help please yes We'll understand the universal purpose of such light languages is to allow your vibration to raise and also get you out of the rational logical mind so by attempting to understand the light language you are slowing the process down understand that this is a frequency transmission and that when you bring through a light language everybody is going to have their own interpretation of it the interpretation will be based upon their own beliefs and uh, um, structures of seeing reality. Though that universal meaning, the love and the energy behind it will also be communicated. 
Now, you can consider this comes from your higher self, but it also relates to different groups of guides that would wish to express through you. And we cannot say who they are right now because there are many. And as you continue to play with this, simply for the purpose of expanding that core vibration of love, connection, expansion, and bringing yourself out of the need to understand and the need and shifting into the state of being pure bliss, then it will expand and it may morph and change into something new. And if you do it for prolonged periods of time, you may find that either your higher self or different guides show themselves to you in your third eye or in different parts of your inner vision. So play with this tool, seeing if you can use it for longer to go into a sort of trance-like state and understand that information and connections will be made in that state, though you have to let go of the need to understand and know right away, knowing that it will come over time and the details will work themselves out over time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, yes, our great thanks and love to you as well. Can I ask a quick question about my light language, where it comes from? Where? Thank you. Oh, in general, you are making connections with Andromeda, and the Sirius, Pleiades, and many others, also elemental realms. And how can it serve others when I do it? Much as we just said, it is an experience of expansion into bliss, joy, and connection. There is information that is translated. And again, when you let go and simply tap into the feeling state, that is enough. Remember, again, one of the core uh, facets of the messages that we are intending to communicate is that it is less about all of the uh, details and mostly about your state of being. You have been programmed to attempt to figure it out, know it all, and really... It is about being in the state of joy, being in the state of flow. The more you are in that state, the more naturally you will know what you need to know. In fact, you always know what you need to know. And things that you don't know will come to you in the moment you need to know them if you really, really did let go. Thank you so much, Pleading Council. Oh, yes, our great thanks and love to you and all of you as well. Are we then finished at this time? Is it I will oh. ask a short one. Uh, sorry, um, there's an auto. Auto would like to ask a, a question. He yes. Hasn't asked. Uh, you said about me. Uh, no, sorry, it's a, a new person called Otto. Are you there? Yeah, uh, I'm here. Um, hello. Yes. Hello. Um. So the question I had just got answered in other ways. So let's see what we got here. Um, till then, I could ask a short one. Yes, you can go ahead, and I will tune in, Thank you. Uh, and I will uh, come back and have a short question. Uh, in, question. In, yeah, thank you. in a previous transmission, you re recommended diatomaceous earth for heavy metal detoxification, and I was wondering uh, the quantity and the ideal quantity and periodicity of it for use, and if all uh, types of diatomaceous earths are the same quality, or if there are different qualities that you know of, because I found on the internet um, certain different qualities. Oh yes, you must take the ones that are described as food grade. Uh, do not take others that are used for more external purposes only. Yeah, and you course. may uh, start with one teaspoon twice a day and expand to take one or two tablespoons twice a day, gradually noticing how your body responds to it. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. That was yeah, so your... thanks to you. All right. Do we have time? Yes. Okay. So after uh, 
that having gone through um, quite a initiation, one could say, uh, things are, are opening up uh, as I am still integrating. Um, I am feeling the knocking on the doors from my guides that I haven't, I know I am in contact with them, but I haven't connected with them consciously in the same way as, um, so much lately. Uh, so my question in regards to what would be most helpful in which ways would be most helpful for me to connect with them clearer? Is it through uh, exploring channeling or light language, or is it in, in meditation? Um, I, I have the tools and awareness for, for, for these different practices, but yeah, is there anything that can be said of, of how it can be developed? It feels like there's a window for, for clearer communication and connection with my higher self and, and guides after this. Uh, uh, yes. Um, yes. All of these ways, all of these ways are very good. And as you have said, channeling, you have this gift, as you know, and there are many who could use that support. And you as well could simply benefit from the act of channeling for yourself. Be it writing right. or speaking and listening or reviewing. Is there anything else coming through, again, apart from, from just doing it and going back into that practice? Is there any particular um, guides or uh, consciousnesses that uh, are, that could help me to, you know, be aware of who is, you know, connecting with me mostly right now, or that would be most open for, for, for clearer communication in that way right now? We are there with you as the Pleiadian Council, not uh, us specifically, the entities connected with the channel, but the aspects of our collective, our consciousness is with you and would very much enjoy uh, the ability to connect. And there are many others as well, especially when you go through that light language and the astral travel, you may not always know who is there, but there is always a purpose for that connection. So do trust it, do allow it. And again, deconstructing the beliefs that say you need to do it right or do it in a certain way and simply trust the unique way that you experience it and even the unique distortions through which you experience it are part of your soul's purpose of exploration and part of the way that you are meant to meet the unique people that you are meant to meet. Right. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I will connect with, with you guys and, and the channel shortly, I feel. So, uh, yeah, my love and, and gratitude. And All right, our great thanks and love to you as well. And so, we suppose that concludes the transmission then. Um, I had a question. All right. Just a final one. Um, it's, it's one of my greatest passions to be able to, um, like share my music and travel and meet people and unite people and and kind of bring this energy that i seem to embody of like harmony and kind of like coexistence between people of different variety of different groups and kind of different cultural upbringings and stuff and it's kind of funny because right now i feel like i in my own personal experience am gaining now the confidence to be able to actually embody that dream and to live it and now with this virus thing it's like it kind of seems to put a hamper on my ability to kind of like go out and do that and i'm wondering like am i gonna get a chance to do that or like how would you utilize this moment in time where it kind of feels like i could do this but it's kind of like because of the way that, that the restrictions are in place around the world it's kind of difficult are you sharing your music few on system. online platforms yeah 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 online in person specifically i guess Oh, all right. Well, we understand the preference towards doing it in person. And we can say that there are some who do not have 
the same restrictive attitude towards the situation that you can connect with. It will not be at the same degree as it once was, but you can connect in that way. And you can also experiment with sharing this gift online more openly, knowing that there are many others that you can reach as well in that sense. Does that sound exciting at all? Yeah, I mean, in life I didn't say I was disappointed, but um, yes, I just have to make the best of it. Yes, unfortunately, uh, this is the situation on your planet, but it does not have to be unfortunate when you understand that limitations are there to serve your growth process. By re restricting you in certain areas, you are allowed to develop other talents. So you may find that perhaps streaming your music live or performing live online helps you to gain some skills you would have not otherwise gained, helps you to make some connections you may not have otherwise accessed. And as things open up more, which in some senses they already are, you will be able to bring yourself out to life so notice those places and those locations that are already open in your world and simply place yourself there if you desire those in-person connections and let go of any expectations. Notice that some certain connections may arise if you do. Yeah, okay. I'll... Yeah, it's kind of really doing up. Awesome. Right. I'll keep that up. Yes, our thanks to you and our thanks to all of you. It has been a wondrous opportunity for us to meet your world, for us to connect in this way, for us to share these energies and messages with you. It is a gift and it is an honor. And again, we affirm to you that all of you are unique and beautiful aspects of source, aspects of creation. And every aspect of source is source itself in form. Your greatest purpose now is to understand that your only purpose is to be who you are, to do what you love, to expand your sense of connection, to reach more people, to break free from this consciousness of separation and duality that is the trap in your world by and large now to understand that all forces are one force, that everything that has two sides is one. And when you can unify, again, every seeming opposite within your heart, you will emanate a vibration that supports others, supports everyone around you in raising their vibration and expanding their self as well. You are all so loved by us, and each and every one of you can establish a clear connection with us. Know that the more you root down, the more you expand up. And the phase of transformation in your world is about returning your connection to the natural world. And the more that you do that and feel your rootedness, the more the stars will shine their light brighter into and onto you. We finally say that you are experiencing a wondrous eclipse moment uh, tomorrow of your time. So use this time to reflect. Use this time to ask yourself, how can I most experience joy within this transformation of my planet? In which ways do the things that uniquely light me up with passion serve the greater good of all? and? Who in my life is most important in supporting this connection and growing, knowing that the abundance of relation, the abundance of love that you have, is very much a part of the shift taking place in your world. So honor and nurture those you love, value them, and know that we love you and see you as our family and hope that you see everyone, every living being, and even non-living beings as part of your family as well. So, a great love and thanks, and we wish you then a very pleasant rest of your day or evening or whatever it is. Huh.
<sighs> okay, hello everybody. Hello, thank you. Oh, hello, welcome. hello. That was, a, that was a big full group today, wasn't it? Yes, it kept growing. Really. It really did keep growing. Thank you so much for being the host today, Bastiani. It was so lovely to have you here. You're welcome. <laughs> How's everybody? Thank you as well. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Mm. Doing well. Hi, Dante. Hi, Laura. How's it going? Great. I love you. I love, I love you. you. I'm too. so grateful to be here today with you. Wow, amazing. I think this is the yes. first time we've seen you in the transmission. Yeah, I know. I know. I stumbled upon you on Facebook. And so I was like, yes, Dante, I put you right on. Cool. Then I found you. I had to go back for the Zoom thing. But yay, you look wonderful. Oh, my oh, lordy. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. What a great <laughs> brightness you are emitting right now. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> So can I ask where where are you? We're in Guatemala right now. Oh yes, okay, that's that's where you've been for a while. Yeah, since February. Mhm. Mm yeah. It's cool. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I'll be here. Yeah. We're kind nice. of still in lockdown with curfew and everything at six, um, but. This is a oh, safe yeah. place in many senses. Uh, people here are not so fear-based. Yeah, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. But Thank you, Dante. Oh, you're very welcome, Amanda. That was beautiful. Oh, okay. good. So much great information. Great. I love hearing from everybody. Yeah, I know. Such a beautiful cast of characters. I, I want to open my yes, eyes sometimes yes. and see what's going on. <laughs> totally. Just there, letting them come really through. Was, has anyone been here since the beginning? And I have. Yeah? How do you like our, our guest? Um, oh my people? gosh, that was very interesting. Such different yeah. energies. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that come about? Do they just like send you a little invitation or do they tap you in the, in the night or sometime and say, I would like to be there? Yeah, a couple of nights ago, I got this being coming to me and showing me things and saying like, we need to talk about this now. That's really, it's very, very relevant. Yeah. I really like their energy. Yeah. <laughs> Very I appreciate I appreciate the new Sarah. I will say that too for the for the, the temporary Sarah. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I just want to say you did a beautiful job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, you have a pretty smile. Um, so I, I wasn't from the beginning, or I, I see it's recording. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to have a link eventually so I can watch it from the beginning? Yeah, for sure. Um, the live stream will be right there on Facebook. And then once we get off the call, I'm going to upload this to YouTube. So it'll be on both of those. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention if people um, like to share donations, um, I'll put the, can, contact me for the email address wasn't posted there today but it's dante.filippini at gmail.com on paypal and at dante55 on venmo and um yeah that helps us pay for the zoom and keep this going and really appreciate it yes yeah awesome awesome and where are you sarah my name is Pashini. uh i'm in denmark Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Sweden, Denmark. Yay. The world. So cool. Yeah. Yes. One big family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yes. in Romania, East Europe. Romania. Oh, Romania. Romania. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. I thought that's where your accent was from. Luca. <laughs> yeah. I am in Seattle. <laughs> Yeah, we've got like, I know some people here, we've got Sweden, Switzerland, Romania, Seattle, Denmark, UK, everywhere. Who's ready for Romania? 
<laughs> Pennsylvania, <laughs> Guatemala. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No one in Antarctica yet, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> not reached that. I've not time. reached that continent. Worked with every people from every continent but Antarctica. Oh, darn it! Uh, <laughs> to work on that. Yeah. Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I've got to go um, eat something and then do something else. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Love you guys. Thank Love you. Love you all. Thank you very much. Love to everybody. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Godspeed. Ciao, ciao.